Second Melachim, Second Kings, chapter one. And Moab revolted against Jezreel after the death of Ahab. And Ahijah fell through the lattice of his upper room in Shamaron and was injured and sent messengers and said to them, Go inquire of Beelzebub, the mighty one of Ekron, if I shall recover from this injury. But a messenger of Yahuwah spoke to Eliah the Tishbite, Rise up, go up to meet the messengers of the sovereign of Shamaron and say to them, is it because there is no Elohim in Israel that you are going to inquire of Beelzebub, the mighty one of Ekron? So therefore thus said Yahuwah, You are not going to get out of the bed to which you have gone up, for you shall certainly die. And Eliah went, and the messengers returned to him, and he said to them, Why have you come back? And they said to him, A man came up to meet us and said to us, Go, return to the sovereign who sent you, and say to him, Thus said Yahuwah, Is it because there is no Elohim in Israel that you are sending to inquire of Beelzebub, the mighty one of Ekron? Therefore, you are not going to get out of the bed to which you have gone up, for you shall certainly die. And he said to them, What was the man like who came up to meet you and spoke to you these words? And they answered him, He was a hairy man and wore a leather girdle around his waist. And he said, It is Eliah the Tishbite. He then sent to him a captain of fifty with his fifty men. And he went up to him and see, he was sitting on the top of a hill. And he spoke to him, Man of Elohim, the sovereign, has said, Come down. And Eliyahu answered and said to the captain of fifty, And if I am a man of Elohim, let fire come down from the heavens and consume you and your fifty men. And fire came down from the heavens and consumed him and his fifty. He then sent another captain of fifty with his fifty men to him. And he answered and said to him, Man of Elohim, this is what the sovereign said, Come down at once. And Eliah answered and said to them, If I am a man of Elohim, let fire come down from the heavens and consume you and your fifty men. And a fire of Elohim came down from the heavens and consumed him and his fifty. And again he sent a third captain of fifty with his fifty men. And the third captain of fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Eliyahu and pleaded with him and said to him, Man of Elohim, please let my life and the life of these fifty servants of yours be precious in your eyes. See, fire has come down from the heavens and burned up the first two captains of fifties with their fifties. But let my life be precious in your eyes. And the messenger of Yahuwah said to Eliyahu, Go down with him. Do not be afraid of him. So he rose up and went down with him to the sovereign and spoke to him. Thus said Yahuwah, Because you have sent messengers to inquire of Beelzebub, the mighty one of Ekron, is it because there is no Elohim in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore you are not going to get out of the bed to which you have gone up, for you shall certainly die. And he died, according to the word of Yahuwah, which Eliyahu had spoken. And Yahuram reigned in his place in the second year of Yahuram, son of Jehoshaphat, sovereign of Yehuda, for he had no son. And the rest of the acts of Ahaziahu, which he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the sovereigns of Israel? Second Kings chapter 2. And it came to be when Yahuwah was to take up Eliyahu to the heavens by a whirlwind that Eliyahu went with Elisha from Gilgal. 
And Eliyahu said to Elisha, Please remain here, for Yahuwah has sent me on to Bethel. And Elisha said, As Yahuwah lives, and as your being lives, I do not leave you. And they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that Yahuwah is taking away your master from your head? And he said, I also know. Be silent. And Eliyahu said to him, Elisha, please remain here, for Yahuwah has sent me on to Jericho. And he said, As Yahuwah lives, and as your being lives, I do not leave you. And they came into Jericho. And the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, do you know that Yahuwah is taking away your master from over you today? And he said, I also know. Be silent. And Eliyahu said to him, Please remain here, for Yahuwah has sent me on to the Jordan. And he said, As Yahuwah lives, and as your being lives, I do not leave you. And the two of them went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance, while the two of them stood by the yarden. And Eliyahu took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. And it was divided this way and that, so that the two of them passed over on dry ground. And it came to be when they had passed over that Eliyahu said to Elisha, Ask what I am to do for you before I am taken away from you. And Elisha said, Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. And he said, You have made it hard to ask. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it is yours. But if not, it is not. And it came to be, as they continued on and spoke, that see a chariot of fire with horses of fire, which separated the two of them, and Eliyahu went up by a whirlwind into the heavens. And Elisha saw it, and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and his horsemen. And he saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own garments and tore them into two pieces. And he took up the mantle of Eliyahu that had fallen from him, and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. And he took the mantle of Eliyahu that had fallen from him and struck the water and said, Where is Yahuwah Elohim of Eliyahu? And he struck the water, and it was divided this way and that. And Elijah passed over. And when the sons of the prophets who were from Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Eliyahu rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. And they said to him, Look, there are fifty strong men with your servants. Please let them go and search for your master, lest the spirit of Yahuwah has taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, Send no one. But they pressed upon him till he was ashamed, and he said, Send. So they sent fifty men, and they searched for three days, but did not find him. And they returned to him, for he remained in Jericho. And he said to them, Did I not say to you, Do not go? And the men of the city called to Elisha, Look, the sight of this city is good, as my master sees. But the waters are spoilt, and the soil barren. And he said, Bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. And they brought it to him. And he went out to the source of the water and threw salt in there and said, Thus said Yahuwah, I have healed this water. No longer shall death or barrenness come from it. And the waters were healed to this day according to the word of Elisha, 
which he spoke. And he went up from there to Beth El. And as he was going up the way, some youths came from the city and mocked him and said to him, Go up, bald head, go up, bald head. And he turned around and looked at them and pronounced a curse on them in the name of Yahuwah. And two female bears came out of the forest and tore to pieces forty-two of the youths. And from there he went to Mount Carmel. And from there he returned to Shamaron. Second Kings chapter 3 And Jehoram, son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel at Shamaron in the eighteenth year of Jehoshaphat, sovereign of Yehuda, and reigned twelve years. And he did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah, but not like his father and mother. For he removed the statue of Baal, which his father had made. But he clung to the sins of Yerobiam, son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. He did not turn away from them. And Misha, servant of Moab, was a sheep breeder. And he paid the servant of Israel 100,000 lambs and the wool of 100,000 rams. And it came to be when Ahab died that the servant of Moab revolted against the servant of Israel. And servant Jehoram went out of Shamaron at that time and mustered all Israel. And he went and sent to Jehoshaphat, servant of Yehuda, saying, The servant of Moab has revolted against me. Do you go with me to fight against Moab? And he said, I go up. I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. And he said, which way do we go up? And he said, By way of the wilderness of Edom. And the sovereign of Israel went, and the sovereign of Yehuda, and the sovereign of Edom, and went round a journey of seven days. And there was no water for the army, nor for the cattle that followed them. And the sovereign of Israel said, What has Yehuda called these three sovereigns to give them into the hand of Moab? And Jehoshaphat said, Is there no prophet of Yahuwah here? Then let us inquire of Yahuwah through him. One of the servants of the sovereign of Israel then answered and said, Elisha son of Shaphat is here, who poured water out on the hands of Eliyahu. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of Yahuwah is with him. And the servant of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the servant of Edom went down to him. And Elisha said to the servant of Israel, What have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and the prophets of your mother. And the servant of Israel said to him, No. For Yahuwah has called these three sovereigns to give them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, As Yahuwah of hosts lives, before whom I stand, if it were not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, servant of Yehuda, I would not look at you nor see you. And now, bring me a harpist. And it came to be when the harpist played that the hand of Yahuwah came upon him. And he said, Thus said Yahuwah, Make this wadi ditches ditches. For thus said Yahuwah, You are not going to see wind nor rain, yet that wadi is to be filled with water, so that you, your cattle, and your beasts shall drink. And this shall be but a light matter in the eyes of Yahuwah. And he shall give Moab into your hand. 
and you shall smite every walled city and every choice city and shall cut down every good tree and stop up every fountain of water and ruin every good piece of land with stones. And it came to be in the morning when the grain offering was offered that sea, water came by way of Edom, and the land was filled with water. And when all Moab heard that the sovereigns had come up to fight against them, all who were able to bear arms and older were gathered, and they stood at the border. And they rose up early in the morning, and the sun was shining on the water. And the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. And they said, This is blood. The sovereigns have indeed struck swords and have killed one another. And now Moab to the spoil. And they came to the camp of Israel, and Israel rose up and smote the Moabites, so that they fled before them, and they entered their land and smote the Moabites. And they broke down the cities, and each man threw a stone on every good piece of land and filled it. And they stopped up all the fountains of water and cut down all the good trees until only the stones of Ker Haraseth was left, and the slingers went round and smote it. And when the servant of Moab saw that the battle was too strong for him, he took with him seven hundred men who drew swords to break through to the servant of Edom, but they could not. Then took his eldest son, who would have reigned in his place, and offered him as a burnt offering up on the wall, and there was great wrath against Israel, and they left him and returned to the land. Second Kings chapter 4 And a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared Yahuwah, and the lender has come to take my two sons to be his slaves. And Elisha said to her, What should I do for you? Inform me. What do you have in the house? And she said, Your female servant has none at all in the house except a pot of oil. And he said, Go borrow vessels from everywhere from all your neighbors empty vessels do not get a few and when you have come in you shall shut the door behind you and your sons then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the filled ones so she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out and it came to be when the vessels were filled that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. But he said to her, There is not another vessel. And the oil ceased. So she went and informed the man of Elohim, and he said, Go, sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. And it came to be on a day that Elisha went to Shunem, where... There was a prominent woman, and she urged him to eat some food. And it came to be, as often as he passed by, that he turned in there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, Look, I know that this is a set-apart man of Elohim who passes by us continually. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there, and a table, and a chair, and a lampstand. And it shall be whenever he comes to us, let him turn in there. And it came to be on a day that he came there, and he turned into the upper room and lay down there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shunammite woman. So he called her, and she stood before him. And he said to him, Please say to her, Look, you have gone to all this trouble for us. What is there to be done for you? Should I speak on your behalf to the sovereign or to the commander of the army? And she answered, I am dwelling among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Well, she has no son, and her husband is old. 
And he said, Call her. So he called her, and she stood in the doorway, and he said, About this time next year you shall embrace a son. And she said, No, my master, man of Elohim, do not lie to your female servant. And the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come of which Elisha had spoken to her, and the child grew. And it came to be on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers, and he said to his father, My head, my head. And he said to a servant, Take him to his mother. So he took him and brought him to his mother, and he sat on her knees till noon and died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of Elohim and shut the door on him and went out. And she called to her husband and said, Please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys, so that I hurry to the man of Elohim and return. And he said, Why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, It is well. And she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Drive and go. Do not slow down except I speak to you. And she went and came to the man of Elohim at Mount Carmel. And it came to be when the man of Elohim saw her at a distance that he said to his servant Gehazi, See, the Shunammite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. And she came to the man of Elohim at the hill, and she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of Elohim said, Leave her alone, for her being is bitter in her, and Yahuwah has hidden it from me and has not revealed it to me. And she said, Did I ask a son of my master? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? And he said to Gehazi, Gird up your loins and take my staff in your hand and go. When you meet anyone, do not greet him. And when anyone greets you, do not answer him. And you shall lay my staff on the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As Yahuwah lives, and as your being lives, I do not leave you. And he rose and followed her. And Gehazi went on ahead of them and laid the staff on the face of the child. But there was no voice and there was no hearing. So he went back to meet him and reported to him, saying, The child has not awakened. And Elisha came into the house and saw the child was dead, lying on his bed. And he went in and shut the door behind the two of them and prayed to Yahuwah. And he went up and lay on the child and put his mouth on his mouth and his eyes on his eyes and his hands on his hands. And he stretched himself out on the child and the flesh of the child became warm. And he returned and walked back and forth in the house, then went up and stretched himself out on him. And the child sneezed seven times. And the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite. So he called her, and she came in to him. And he said, Pick up your son. Then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and picked up her son and went out. And Elisha returned to Gilgal. And the scarcity of food was in the land, and the sons of the prophets were sitting before him. And he said to his servant, Put on the large pot and cook stew for the sons of the prophets. And one went out to the field to gather plants and found a wild vine and gathered wild cucumbers from it, filled the skirt of his garment, and came and sliced them into the pot of stew, though they did not know what they were. They then served it to the men to eat, and it came to be as they were eating the stew that they cried out and said, O oh, man of Elohim, there is death in the pot, and they were unable to eat it. And he said, Then bring some flour, and he put it into the pot and said, Serve it to the people to eat. 
and there was no evil matter in the pot. Now a man came from Baal Shalisha and brought the man of Elohim bread of the first fruits, twenty loaves of barley bread and newly ripened grain in his knapsack. And he said, Give it to the people to eat. And his servant said, What? Do I set this before one hundred men? And he said, Give it to the people to eat. For thus said Yahuwah, Eat and have some left over. And he set it before them, and they ate and had some left over, according to the word of Yahuwah. Second Kings chapter 5 And Naaman, commander of the army of the sovereign of Aram, was a great man in the eyes of his master and highly respected because by him Yahuwah had given deliverance to Aram, and he was a brave man but leprous. And the Arameans had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel, and she served the wife of Naaman. And she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Shamaron, then he would recover him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and reported to his master, saying, Thus and thus spoke the girl who is from the land of Israel. And the sovereign of Aram said, Go enter and let me send a letter to the sovereign of Israel. And he went and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of garments. And he brought the letter to the sovereign of Israel, which said, And now, when this letter comes to you, see, I have sent Naaman my servant to you, so that you shall recover him of his leprosy. And it came to be when the sovereign of Israel read the letter that he tore his garments and said, Am I Elohim to kill and keep alive that this man sends a man to me to recover him of his leprosy? For consider now and see how he is seeking an occasion with me. And it came to be, when Elisha the man of Elohim heard that the sovereign of Israel had torn his garments, that he sent to the sovereign, saying, Why have you torn your garments? Please let him come to me so that he knows that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the entrance of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go, and you shall wash seven times in the yard, and that your flesh might be restored to you and be clean. But Naaman became wroth and went away and said, See, I said to myself, He would certainly come out to me and stand and call on the name of Yahuwah his Elohim and wave his hand over the place and recover the leprosy. Are not the Abana and the Farpa, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? And he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had spoken to you a great matter, would you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, Wash and be clean? Then he went down and dipped seven times in the yard and according to the word of the man of Elohim. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he returned to the man of Elohim, he and all his company, and came and stood before him and said, See, now I know that there is no Elohim in all the earth except in Israel. And now please take a gift from your servant. But he said, As Yahuwah lives, before whom I stand, I do not accept it. And he pressed on him to accept it, but he refused. Then Naaman said, If not, please let your servant be given two mule loads of earth, for no longer is your servant going to make a burnt offering and slaughtering to other mighty ones but to Yahuwah. Yahuwah grant forgiveness to your servant in this matter. When my master goes into the house of Remon to worship there, and he leans on my hand, and I bow down in the house of Remon, when I bow down in the house of Remon, 
Yahuwah, please grant forgiveness to your servant in this matter. Then he said to him, Go in peace. And when he had gone from him some distance, but Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of Elohim, said to himself, Look, my master has spared name of this Armen, while not receiving from his hands what he brought. But as Yahuwah lives, I shall run after him and take whatever from him. And Gehazi pursued Naaman, and when Naaman saw him running after him, he came down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is there peace? And he said, Peace. My master has sent me, saying, Look, even now two young men of the sons of the prophets have come to me from the mountains of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two changes of garments. And Naaman said, Please accept two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver and two bags with two changes of garments and handed them to two of his servants, and they bared them ahead of him. And when he came to the high place, he took them from their hand and stored them away in the house and let the men go, and they went. And he went in and stood before his master, and Elisha said to him, Where did you go, Gehazi? And he said, your servant did not go anywhere. But he said to him, Did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? Is it time to accept silver and to accept garments and olive trees and vineyards and sheep and cattle and male and female servants? So let the leprosy of Naaman cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from him as lepers as no. Second Kings chapter 6. And the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, See, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please let us go to the yard and let every man take a log from there and let us make there a place to dwell. And he answered, Go. Then the one said, Please undertake to go with your servants. And he answered, I shall go. And he went with them and they came to the yard, and they cut down trees. And it came to be as one was cutting down a tree that the iron axe head fell into the water. And he cried out and said, Oh, my master, for it was borrowed. And the man of Elohim said, Where did it fall? And he showed him the place, and he cut off a stick and threw it in there and made the iron float. And he said, Pick it up. And he reached out his hand and took it. And the sovereign of Aram was fighting against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, My camp is in such and such a place. And the man of Elohim sent to the sovereign of Israel, saying, Be on guard, do not pass this place, for the Armenians are coming down there. The sovereign of Israel then sent to the place of which the man of Elohim had spoken to him and warned him so that he was on his guard there, not once and not twice. And this greatly troubled the heart of the servant of Aram. And he called his servants and said to them, Declare to me, who of us is for the servant of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my master, O sovereign, for Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, declares to the sovereign of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. And he said, Go and see where he is, so that I send and get him. And it was reported to him, saying, See, he is in Dotham. And he sent horses and chariots and a great army there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. And the servant of the man of Elohim rose early and went out and saw an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Oh, my master, what do we do? And he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Yahuwah, I pray, open his eyes. And let him see. And Yahuwah opened the eyes of the young man, and he looked and saw the mountain covered with horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed to Yahuwah and said, Strike this nation with blindness, I pray. 
and he struck them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said to them, This is not the way, nor is this the city. Follow me and let me bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Shemaron. And it came to be when they had come to Shemaron that Elisha said, Yahuwah, open the eyes of these men so that they see. And Yahuwah opened their eyes, and they looked and saw they were in the midst of Shemaron. And when the servant of Israel saw them, he said to Elisha, My father, should I smite? Should I smite? But he said, Do not smite. Do you smite those whom you have taken captive with your sword and your bow? Set food and water before them and let them eat and drink and go to their master. And he made a great feast for them. And after they ate and drank, he let them go, and they went to their master. And the bands of Armenian raiders came no more into the land of Israel. <coughs> and after this it came to be that Ben-Hadad, the servant of Aram, mustered all his army and went up and besieged Shemaron. And there was a great scarcity of food in Shemaron. And see, they besieged it until a donkey's head went at eighty pieces of silver and one-fourth of a cab of dove droppings for five pieces of silver. And it came to be as the servant of Israel was passing by on the wall, a woman cried out to him, saying, Help! My master, old sovereign. And he said, If Yahuwah does not help you, where do I find help for you? From the threshing floor or from the wine press? And the sovereign said to her, What is troubling you? And she answered, This woman said to me, Give your son and let us eat him today, and tomorrow we eat my son. So we cooked my son and ate him. And I said to her on the next day, Give your son and let us eat him. But she has hidden her son. And it came to be when the sovereign heard the words of the woman that he tore his garments. And as he passed by on the wall, the people looked and saw the sackcloth on his body underneath. And he said, Elohim, do so to me and more also, if the head of Elisha, son of Shaphat, remains on him today. And Elisha was sitting in his house, and the elders were sitting with him. And the servant sent a man ahead of him. But before the messenger came to him, he said to the elders, Do you see how this son of a murderer has sent someone to take away my head? Look, when the messenger comes, shut the door and hold him fast at the door. Is not the sound of his master's feet behind him? While he was still speaking with them, then see the messenger came down to him, and he said, Look, this evil is from Yahuwah. Why should I wait for Yahuwah any longer? Second Kings chapter 7 And Elisha said, Hear the word of Yahuwah. Thus said Yahuwah, about this time tomorrow, a seah of fine flour for a shekel, and two seahs of barley for a shekel, at the gate of Shamaron. And an officer on whose hand the sovereign leaned answered the man of Elohim and said, Look, if Yahuwah is making windows in the heavens, shall this word come true? And he said, Look, you are about to see it with your eyes, but not eat of it. And there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate. And they said to each other, Why are we sitting here until we are dead? If we shall say, Let us go into the city, the scarcity of food is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we shall die. And now, come, let us surrender to the army of the Armenians. If they keep us alive, we live, and if they kill us, we shall die. So at twilight they rose up to go to the camp of the Armenians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Armenian camp, look, no one was there. For Yahuwah had caused the army of the Armenians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of a great army. And they said to each other, Look, the sovereign of Israel 
has hired against us the sovereigns of the Hittites and the sovereigns of the Mizrites to come against us. So they rose up and fled at twilight and left the camp as it is, their tents and their horses and their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. And when these leopards came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent and ate and drank and took from their silver and gold and garments, and went and hid them. And they came back, and went into another tent, and took from there, and went and hid it. Then they said to each other, We are not doing right. This day is a day of good news, and we are keeping silent. And if we wait until morning light, then evil shall come upon us. And now come. Let us go and inform the house of the sovereign. And they came and called to the gatekeepers of the city and informed them, saying, We went to the camp of Aram, and look, there is not a man or a voice of man, only horses tied and donkeys tied, and the tents as they were. And the gatekeepers called, and they informed the house of the sovereign inside. So the sovereign rose up in the night and said to his servants, Let me now inform you what the Armenians have done to us. They know that we are starving, so they have gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, When they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and enter into the city. And one of his servants answered and said, Please let some take five of the horses that are left in the city. Look, they are like the entire crowd of Israel that are left in it. Look, they are like the entire crowd of Israel left from those who are consumed. So let us send and see. They then took two chariots with horses, and the sovereign sent them in the direction of the camp of Aram, saying, Go and see. And they went after them to the Jordan, and look, all the way was littered with garments and weapons which the Armenians had thrown away in their haste. And the messengers returned and reported to the sovereign. Then the people went out and plundered the camp of Aram. So a seah of fine flour was for a shekel, and two seahs of barley for a shekel, according to the word of Yahuwah. And the sovereign had appointed the officer on whose hand he leaned to be in charge of the gate. But the people trampled him in the gate, and he died, as the man of Elohim had said, who spoke when the sovereign came down to him. And it came to be as the man of Elohim had spoken to the sovereign, saying, Two seals of barley for a shekel and a seal of fine flour for a shekel at this time tomorrow in the gate of Shamaron. That officer answered the man of Elohim and said, Now look, if Yahuwah is making windows in the heavens, is it according to this word? And he had said, Look, you are about to see it with your eyes, but not eat of it. And so it came to be for him. For the people trampled him in the gate, and he died. Second Kings chapter 8 And Elisha spoke to the woman whose son he had restored to life, saying, Rise up and go, you and your household. The sojourn wherever you do sojourn, for Yahuwah has called for a scarcity of food, and also it is coming upon the land for seven years. And the woman rose up and did according to the word of the man of Elohim, and she went with her household and sojourned in the land of the Philistines seven years. And it came to be at the end of seven years that the woman returned from the land of the Philistines, and she went to cry out to the sovereign for her house and for her land. And the sovereign was speaking to Gehazi, the servant of the man of Elohim, saying, Please relate to me all the great matters Elisha has done. And it came to be as he was relating to the sovereign how he had restored the dead to life, that see, the woman whose son he had restored to life was crying out to the sovereign for her house and for her land. 
And Gehazi said, My master, O sovereign, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elisha restored to life. So the sovereign asked the woman, and she related to him. And the sovereign appointed a certain eunuch for her, saying, Return all that was hers, and all the increase of the field from the day that she left the land until now. And Elisha came to Damascus, and Ben-Hadad, sovereign of Aram, was sick. And it was reported to him, saying, The man of Elohim has come here. And the sovereign said to Haziel, Take a present in your hand, and go to meet the man of Elohim, and inquire of Yahuwah by him, saying, Do I recover from this sickness? And Haziel went to meet him, and took a present with him of all the good wares of Damascus, forty camel loads. And he came and stood before him, and said, Your son Ben-Hadad, sovereign of Aram, has sent me to you, saying, Do I recover from this sickness? And and Elijah said to him, Go, say to him, You shall certainly recover. But Yahuwah has shown me that he shall certainly die. And he looked at him steadily until he was ashamed. Then the man of Elohim wept. And Haziel said, Why is my master weeping? And he answered, Because I know the evil that you are going to do to the children of Israel, setting their strongholds on fire, and slaying their young men with the sword, and dashing their children, and ripping open their women with child. And Haziel said, But what is your servant, a dog, that he should perform this great matter? And Elisha answered, Yahuwah has shown that you are to be sovereign over Aram. And he left Elisha and came to his master, who said to him, What did Elisha say to you? And he answered, He said to me that you shall certainly recover. And on the next day it came to be that he took a thick cloth and dipped it in water and spread it over his face so that he died. And Haziel reigned in his place. And in the fifth year of Jehoram, son of Ahab, sovereign of Israel, Jehoshaphat, was sovereign of Yehuda, Jehoram, son of Jehoshaphat, began to reign as sovereign of Yehuda. He was thirty-two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he walked in the way of the sovereigns of Israel as the house of Ahab had done. For the daughter of Ahab was his wife, and he did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah. However, Yahuwah would not destroy Yehuda for the sake of Dawid his servant, as he promised him to give a lamb to him and his sons forever. In his days Edom revolted from under the hand of Yehuda and made a sovereign over themselves. And Yoram passed over to Tezire and all his chariots with him. And he rose by night and smote the Edomites who had surrounded him with the commanders of the chariots, but his people fled to their tents. Yet Edom has been in revolt from under the hand of Yehuda to this day. Then Libna revolted at the same time. And the rest of the acts of Yoram, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the sovereigns of Yehuda? So Yoram slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of Dawid. And Ahaziyahu, his son, reigned in his place. In the twelfth year of Yoram, son of Ahab, sovereign of Israel, Ahaziyahu, son of Yehoram, sovereign of Yehuda, began to reign. Ahaziyahu was twenty-two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. And the name of his mother was Athaliahu, the granddaughter of Omri, sovereign of Israel. And he walked in the way of the house of Ahab, and did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah, as the house of Ahab had done. For he was the son-in-law of the house of Ahab. And he went with Yoram, son of Ahab, to battle against Haziel, sovereign of Aram, of Ramoth Gilead. And the army smote Yoram. And sovereign Yoram went back to Israel to recover from the wounds with which the Arameans had smitten him at Ramah. 
when he fought against Haziel, servant of Aram. Then Haziyahu, son of Jehoram, the servant of Yehuda, went down to see Yoram, son of Ahab, in Israel, for he was sick. Second Kings chapter 9 And Elisha the prophet called one of the sons of the prophets and said to him, Gird your loins and take this flask of oil in your hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. And you shall go there and look there for Yahu son of Jehoshaphat son of Nemsha, And go in and make him rise up from among his brothers. And take him to an inner room. And take the flask of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus said Yahuwah, I have anointed you sovereign over Israel. Then you shall open the door and flee and do not wait. So the young man, the young man, the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead and came in and saw the commanders of the army sitting. And he said, I have a message for you, O commander. And Yahoo said, For which one of us? And he said, For you, commander. And he rose up and went into the house. And he poured the oil on his head and said to him, Thus said Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, I have anointed you sovereign over the people of Yahuwah over Israel, and you shall smite the house of Ahab, your master, and I shall avenge the blood of my servants and the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of Yahuwah at the hand of Isabel. And all the house of Ahab shall perish, and I shall cut off from Ahab all the males in Israel, both those shut up and those left at large. And I shall give up the house of Ahab like the house of Yarobiam, son of Nabat, and like the house of Beasha, son of Ahiah. And the dogs are going to eat Isabel and the portion of Israel, with none to bury her. Then he opened the door and fled. And Yahu came out to the servants of his master, and one said to him, Is there peace? Why did this mad man come to you? And he said to them, You know the man and his talk. And they said, A lie. Reveal it to us now. So he said, Thus and thus he spoke to me, saying, Thus said Yahuwah, I have anointed you sovereign over Israel. And they hurried, and each one took his garment, and put it under him on the top of the steps. And they blew a ram's horn, saying, Yahu reigns. Thus Yahu, son of Jehoshaphat, son of Nemesha, conspired against Yoram. Now Yoram had been guarding Ramoth Gilead, he and all Israel, against Haziel, sovereign of Aram. But sovereign Jehoram had returned to Israel to recover from the wounds with which the Armenians had smitten him when he fought with Haziel, sovereign of Aram. Yahu now said, If this is your desire, let no one leave or escape from the city to go and make it known in Israel. And Yahu rode in a chariot and went to Israel, for Yahram was laid up there, and Ahaziah, sovereign of Yehuda, had come down to see Yoram. And a watchman stood on the tower in Israel, and he saw the company of Yahu as he came and said, I see a company of men. And Yehoram said, Get a horseman and send him to meet them and let him say, Is there peace? And the horseman went to meet him and said, Thus said the servant, Is there peace? And Yahu said, what have you to do with peace? Turn around and follow me. And the watchman spoke, saying, The messenger went to them, but is not coming back. Then he sent out a second horseman who came to them and said, Thus said the sovereign, Is there peace? And Yahu answered, What have you to do with peace? Turn around and follow me. And the watchman spoke, saying, he went up to them and is not coming back. And the driving is like the driving of Yahu, son of Nemesha, for he drives madly. Then Jehoram said, Hitch up! And his chariot was hitched up. And Jehoram, sovereign of Israel, and Ahaziah, Yahu, sovereign of Yehuda, went out, each in his chariot. 
and they went out to meet Yahoo and met him on the portion of Naboth, the Israelite. And it came to be when Jehoram saw Yahoo that he said, Is there peace, Yahoo? But he answered, What peace as long as the whorings of your mother Isabel and her witchcraft are so many? Thereupon Jehoram turned his hands around and fled and said to Ahaziah, Treachery, O Ahaziah! And Yahu drew his bow and shot Jehoram between his arms. And the arrow came out at his heart, and he sank down in his chariot. And Yahu said to Bidkor, his officer, Take him up and throw him into the portion of the field of Naboth, the Israelite. Remember how you and I were riding together behind Ahab, his father, and you who are lifted up this pronouncement against him? Have I not seen the blood of Naboth and the blood of his sons last night, declares Yahuwah? And I shall repay you in this portion, declares Yahuwah. And now take up, throw him on the portion according to the word of Yahuwah. And Ahaziah, sovereign of Yehuda, saw this and fled up the way to Beth Hagan. And Yahu pursued him and said, smite him, him too, in the chariot. At the ascent to Gur, which is by Yibliam, and he fled to Megiddo and died there. Then his servants conveyed him in the chariot to Jerusalem and buried him in his tomb with his fathers in the city of Dawid. And in the eleventh year of Yoram, son of Ahab, Ahaziah began to reign over Yehuda. And Yahu came to Israel, and Isabel heard of it. And she put paint on her eyes, and adorned her head, and looked through a window. And as Yahu came to the gate, she said, Is it P. Zimra, slayer of your master? And he lifted up his face to the window, and said, Who is with me? Who? And two, three eunuchs looked down to him. And he said, Throw her down. And they threw her down, and some of her blood spattered on the wall and on the horses, and he trampled her underfoot. And he went in, and he ate and drank, and said, Go now, see to this cursed one, and bury her, for she was a sovereign's daughter. So they went to bury her, but all they found of her was the skull and the feet and the palms of the hands. And they came back and informed him, and he said, This is the word of Yahuwah, which he spoke by his servant Eliyahu the Tishbite, saying, In the portion of Israel, dogs are going to eat the flesh of Isabel, and the corpse of Isabel shall be as dung on the surface of the field, in the portion of Israel, so that they do not say, This is Isabel. Second Kings chapter 10 And Ahab had seventy sons in Shamaron. And Yahu wrote letters and sent to Shamaron to the rulers of Israel, to the elders and to the guardians of Ahab, saying, And now, when this letter comes to you, since your master's sons are with you, and you have chariots and horses and a walled city and weapons, choose the best and most up right of your master's sons and set him on his father's throne and fight for your master's house and they were greatly afraid and said look two sovereigns have not stood before him how do we stand we and he who was over the house and he who was over the city the elders also and the guardians sent to Yahu saying we are your servants, and all that you say to us we do. We do not set up anyone to reign. Do what is good in your eyes. And he wrote a second letter to them, saying, If you offer me, and if you obey my voice, take the heads of the men, your master's sons, and come to me at Israel by this time tomorrow. Now the sovereign's sons, seventy beings, 
were with the great men of the city who brought them up. And it came to be when the letter came to them that they took the sovereign's sons and slaughtered them, seventy men, and put their heads in baskets, and sent them to him at Yisrael. Then a messenger came and informed him, saying, They have brought the heads of the sovereign's sons. And he said, Make them two heaps at the entrance of the gate unto morning. And it came to be in the morning that he went out and stood and said to all the people, You are righteous. Look, I conspired against my master and slew him. But who smote all these? Know now that not one word of Yahuwah, which Yahuwah spoke concerning the house of Ahab, does fall to the ground. For Yahuwah has done what he spoke by his servant Eliyahu. And Yahu smote all those left of the house of Ahab in Israel, and all his great men, and his friends, and his priests, until he left him without a survivor. And he rose up to go and went to Shamaron. On the way at Beth Egwed of the shepherds, Yahu met the brothers of Ahaziahu, sovereign of Yehuda, and said, Who are you? And they answered, we are brothers of Ahaziahu, and we have come down to greet the sons of the sovereign and the sons of the sovereign's mother. And he said, Take them alive. So they took them alive and slew them at the well of Beth Equat, forty two men, and he left none of them. And he left there and met Yonadab, son of Rechab, coming to meet him, and blessed him, and said to him, is your heart right, as my heart is towards your heart? And Yehonadab answered, It is, Yahu said, If it is, give me your hand. And he gave him his hand, and he took him up to him into the chariot. And he said, Come with me and see my order for Yahuwah. And they made him ride in his chariot. And he came to Shamaron and smote all those left of Ahab and Shamaron, till he had destroyed them according to the word of Yahuwah, which he spoke to Eliyahu. And Yahu gathered all the people and said to them, Ahab served Baal a little, Yahu serves him much. And now call to me all the prophets of Baal, all his servants and all his priests. Let no one be missing, for I have a great slaughtering to make to Baal. Anyone who is lacking shall not live. But Yehu did this deceptively in order to destroy the servants of Baal. And Yahu said, Set apart an assembly of Baal. So they proclaimed it. And Yahu sent throughout all Israel. And all the servants of Baal came, so that there was not a man left who did not come. And they came into the house of Baal. And the house of Baal was filled from end to end. And he said to him who was over the wardrobe, Bring out garments for all the servants of Baal. And he brought out garments for them. And Yahu and Yehonadab, son of Rechab, went into the house of Baal and said to the servants of Baal, Search and see that no servants of Yahuwah are here with you, but only the servants of Baal. So they went in to make offerings and burnt offerings. Now Yahu had appointed for himself eighty men on the outside and had said, The man who lets escape any of the men whom I have brought into your hands, his life for his life. And it came to be when he had finished making the burnt offering, Yahu said to the guard and to the officers, Go in, smite them, let no one come out. And they smote them with the edge of the sword, and the guards and the officers threw them out and went into the inner room of the house of Baal and brought out the pillars of the house of Baal and burned them and broke down the statue of Baal and broke down the house of Baal and made it a latrine to this day. Thus Yahuwah destroyed Baal out of Israel. However, Yahuwah did not turn away from the sins of 
Yeroboam, son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin from the golden calves that were at Beth El and Dan. And Yahuwah said to Yahu, Because ye have done well by doing what is right in my eyes, and have done to the house of Ahab all that was in my heart, your sons are going to sit on the throne of Israel to the fourth generation. But Yahu did not guard to walk in the Torah of Yahuwah Elohim of Israel with all his heart. For he did not turn away from the sins of Yarobiam, who had made Israel sin. In those days, Yahuwah began to cut off some in Israel. And Haziel smoked them throughout all the border of Israel, from the Jordan to the sun rising, all the land of Gilead, the Gadites and the Reubenites and the Manasseites, from Aurora, which is by the water Arnon, including Gilead and Bashan, and the rest of the acts of Yahu, and all that he did, and all his might, are they not written in the book of the annals of the sovereigns of Israel? So Yahu slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Shamaron. And Jehoahaz, his son, reigned in his place. And the days that Yahu reigned over Israel in Shamaron were twenty-eight years. Second Kings, chapter eleven. And Athaliah was the mother of Ahaziyahu. And when she saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the offspring of the rain. But Yehosheba, the daughter of Saron, Yoram, sister of Ahaziyahu, took Yoash, son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the sons of the sovereign's sons who were put to death. So they hid him and his nurse in the bedroom from Athaliyahu, and he was not put to death. And he remained with her in hiding in the house of Yahuwah for six years, while Athaliah was reigning over the land. And in the seventh year, Yehoiada sent and brought the commanders of hundreds with the Karaites and the runners, and brought them into the house of Yahuwah to him. And he made a covenant with them and took an oath from them in the house of Yahuwah, and showed them the son of the sovereign. And he commanded them, saying, This is what you ought to do. One third of you who come in on the Sabbath to be on guard in the sovereign's house, and one third of the gate of Sir, and one third at the gate behind the runners, and you shall be on guard in the house, lest it be broken down. And the two detachments of you who are going out on the Sabbath shall be on guard in the house of Yahuwah for the sovereign. And you shall surround the sovereign on all sides, every man with his weapons in his hand. And whoever comes within the ranks, let him be put to death, and be with the sovereign as he goes out and as he comes in. So the commanders of the hundreds did according to all that Yahuwah the priest commanded. And each of them took his men who were going in on the Sabbath with those who were going out on the Sabbath and came to Yehoiada the priest. And the priest gave the commanders of hundreds the spears and shields which had belonged to sovereign David the weed that were in the house of Yehoah. And the runners stood, every man with his weapons in his hand, all around the sovereign, from the right side of the house to the left side of the house, by the altar and the house. And he brought out the son of the sovereign and put on him the diadem and the witness. And they set him up to reign and anointed him, and they clapped their hands and said, Let the sovereign live. And Athaliah heard the noise of the runners, the people, and she came to the people into the house of Yahuwah, and looked and saw the sovereign standing by a column according to the ruling, and the chiefs and the trumpeters were beside the sovereign, and all the people of the land rejoicing and blowing trumpets. And Athaliah tore her garments and cried out, Treason! Treason! 
And Yehoiada, the priest, commanded the commanders of the hundreds, the officers of the army, and said to them, Take her outside the ranks and slay with the sword whoever follows her. For the priest had said, Do not let her be killed in the house of Yehoah. So they took hold of her, and she went by way of the horse's entrance to the sovereign's house and was put to death there. And Yehoiada made a covenant between Yehoah and the sovereign and the people to be the people of Yehoah, also between the sovereign and the people. And all the people of the land went to the house of Baal and broke it down. They completely broke up its altars and images and slew Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. And the priest appointed inspectors over the house of Yehoah and took the commanders of hundreds, and the Karaites and the runners, and all the people of the land. And they brought the sovereign down from the house of Yehoah, and went by way of the gate of the runners to the sovereign's house. And he sat on the throne of the sovereigns, and all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city had rest, for they had slain Athaliahu with a sword in the sovereign's house. Yehoash was seven years old when he began to reign. Second Kings chapter 12 Jehoash began to reign in the seventh year of Yahu, and he reigned forty years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Tisibiah of Beersheba. And Jehoash did what was right in the eyes of Yehoah, all the days in which Jehoah, Yada, the priest, instructed him. However, the high places were not taken away. The people still slaughtered and burned incense on the high places. And Jehoash said to the priest, All the silver of the set-apart gifts that are brought into the house of Jehoah, the silver coming over, each man's assessment, silver, all the silver that a man purposes in his heart to bring into the house of Yahuwah. Let the priests take for themselves, each from his friend, and let them repair the damages of the house, wherever there is damage. And it came to be by the twenty-third year of Sovereign Yehoash that the priests had not repaired the damages of the house. And Sovereign Yehoash called Yahuwah the priest and the other priests and said to them, why have you not repaired the damages of the house? And now do not take any more silver from your friends, but give it for repairing the damages of the house. And the priests agreed that they would neither receive any more silver from the people nor repair the damages of the house. And Yehuyada the priest took a chest and bored a hole in its lid and set it beside the altar on the right side as one comes into the house of Yehoah. And the priests who guarded the door put there all the silver that was brought into the house of Yehoah. And it came to be whenever they saw that there was much silver in the chest, that the sovereign scribe and the high priest came up and put it in bags and counted the silver that was found in the house of Yehoah, and gave the silver, weighed out, into the hands of those who did the work, who had the oversight of the house of Yehoah. And they paid it out to the carpenters and builders who worked on the house of Yehoah, and to stone masons and stone cutters, and for buying timber and huge stone to repair the damage of the house of Yehoah. And for all that was paid out to repair the house, however, there were not made for the house of Yehua basins of silver, snuffers, sprinkling, bowls, trumpets, any objects of gold or objects of silver, from the silver that was brought into the house of Yehua. For they gave that to the workmen, and they repaired the house of Yehua with it. And they did not reckon with the men into whose hand they gave the silver to be paid to workmen, for they acted trustworthily. The silver from the trespass offerings and the silver from the sin offerings was not brought into the house of Yehoah. It belonged to the priests. 
And Haziel, sovereign of Aram, went up and fought against Goth and captured it. And Haziel set his face to go up to Jerusalem. And Jehoash, sovereign of Yehuda, took all the set-apart gifts that his fathers, Jehoshaphat and Jehoram, and Ahaziah, who sovereigns of Yehuda, had set apart, and his own set-apart gifts, and all the gold found in the treasuries of the house of Yehuah, and in the sovereign's house, and sent them to Haziel, sovereign of Aram. Then he went away from Jerusalem. And the rest of the acts of Joash, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the sovereigns of Yehuda? And his servants rose up and made a conspiracy and smote Joash in the house of Melo, which goes down to Silla. For Yozakah, son of Shemath, and Jehozabad, son of Shamar, his servants smote him. So he died. And they buried him with his fathers in the city of Dawid. And Amatiah, his son, reigned in his place. Second Kings chapter 13. In the twenty-third year of Joash, son of Ahaziah, sovereign of Yehuda, Yahu Ahaz, son of Yahu, began to reign over Israel in Shamaron and reigned seventeen years. And he did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah and followed the sins of Yarobiam, son of Nabat, who had made Israel sin. He did not turn away from them. And the displeasure of Yahuwah burned against Israel, and he gave them into the hand of Haziel, sovereign of Aram, and into the hand of Benadad, son of Haziel, all the days. Then Yahuwah sought the face of Yahuwah, and Yahuwah listened to him. For he saw the oppression of Israel, because the sovereign of Aram oppressed them. And Yahuwah gave Israel a savior so that they came out from under the hand of Aram. And the children of Israel dwelt in their tents as before. However, they did not turn away from the sins of the house of Yerobiam, who had made Israel sin, but walked in them. Moreover, the Asherah also remained in Shamaron, for he left of the army of Jehoahaz only fifty horsemen and ten chariots and ten thousand footmen for the servant of Aram had destroyed them and made them like the dust at threshing and the rest of the acts of Jehoahaz and all that he did and his might are they not written in the book of the annals of the servants of Israel so Jehoahaz slept with his fathers and they buried him in Shamaron and Joash his son reigned in his place. In the thirty-seventh year of Joash, sovereign of Yehuda, Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, began to reign over Israel and Shamaron sixteen years. And he did evil in the eyes of Yehua. He did not turn away from all the sins of Jerobiam, son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. He walked in it. And the rest of the acts of Joash and all that he did and his might with which he fought against Amaziah, sovereign of Yehuda, are they not written in the book of the annals of the sovereigns of Israel? So Joash slept with his fathers, and Yerobian sat on his throne, and Joash was buried in Shamaron with the sovereigns of Israel. And Elisha had become sick with the sickness in which he died. And Joash, the sovereign of Israel, came down to him and wept over his face and said, O oh, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. And Elisha said to him, Take a bow and some arrows. And he took a bow and some arrows. And he said to the sovereign of Israel, Place your hand on the bow. So he placed his hand, and Elisha placed his hands on the hands of the sovereign, and said, Open the east window. And he had opened it, and Elisha said, Shoot, and he shot. Then he said, The arrow of deliverance of Yahuwah, and the arrow of deliverance from Aram, for you shall smite Aram at Ephek until it is finished. Then he said, Take the arrows, and he took them. 
And he said to the servant of Israel, Strike the ground. And he struck three times and stopped. And the man of Elohim was wrought with him and said, You should have smitten five or six times, then you would have smitten Aram till its utter destruction. But now you shall smite Aram only three times. And Elisha died. And they buried him in the raiding band from Moab came into the land into the spring of the year. And it came to be they were burying a man, and there they saw a raiding band, and cast the man in the tomb of Elisha. And the man fell and touched the bones of Elisha, and came to life and stood on his feet. And Haziel, sovereign of Aram, oppressed Israel all the days of Jehoahaz. But Jehoah showed favor to them, and had compassion on them, and turned toward them for the sake of his covenant with Abraham, Yeshak, and Jacob, and would not destroy them or cast them from his presence as yet. And Haziel, sovereign of Aram, died, and Benadad, his son, reigned in his place, and Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, recovered from the hand of Ben-Hadad, son of Haziel, the cities which he had taken out of the hand of Jehoahaz, his father, in battle. Joash smote him three times, and he recovered the cities of Israel. Second Kings chapter 14 In the second year of Joash, son of Jehoahaz, sovereign of Israel, Amatsiyahu, son of Joash, sovereign of Yehuda, began to reign. He was twenty-five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty-nine years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jehoadan of Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the eyes of Yehuah, but not like his father Dawid. He did according to all his father Joash did. However, the high places were not taken away. The people still slaughtered and burned incense on the high places. And it came to be, as soon as the rain was established in his hand, that he smote his servants who had smitten his father the sovereign. But he did not put to death the children of the murderers according to what is written in the book of the Torah of Moshe in which Yahuwah commanded, saying, Fathers are not put to death for the children, and children are not put to death for the fathers. But each one is put to death for his own sin. He smote Edom in the valley of salt, ten thousand, and took Silla in battle and called its name Yokthiel to this day. Amaziah then sent messengers to Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, son of Yahu, servant of Israel, saying, Come, let us look each other in the face. And Jehoash, servant of Israel, sent to Amaziah, servant of Yehuda, saying, The thistle that was in Lebanon sent to the cedar that was in Lebanon, saying, Give your daughter to my son as wife. And a wild beast that was in Lebanon passed by and trampled the thistle. You have certainly smitten Edom, and your heart has lifted you up. Be esteemed and stay in your house. But why do you stir up yourself to evil that you should fall, you and Yehuda with you? But Amaziah did not listen to so Jehoash, sovereign of Israel, went up, and he and Amasiah, sovereign of Yehuda, faced one another at Beth Shemash, which belongs to Yehuda. And Yehuda was smitten before Israel, and they each fled to his tent. And Jehoash, sovereign of Israel, caught Amasiah, sovereign of Yehuda, son of Jehoash, son of Ahaziah, at Beth Shemash. And they came to Jerusalem, and he broke through the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim to the corner gate, 400 cubits, and took all the gold and silver and all the objects that were found in the house of Yehuah, and in the treasuries of the servant's house, and hostages, and returned to Shamaron. And the rest of the acts of Jehoash, which he did, 
and his might, and how he fought with a master Yahoo, sovereign of Yehuda. Are they not written in the book of the annals of the sovereigns of Israel? So Jehoash slept with his fathers, and was buried in Shemaron with the sovereigns of Israel. And Yarabim his son reigned in his place. And Amasah Yahu, son of Yoash, sovereign of Yehuda, lived fifteen years after the death of Yehoash, son of Yehoahaz, sovereign of Israel. And the rest of the acts of Amasah Yahu, are they not written in the book of the annals of the sovereigns of Yehuda? And they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem. And he fled to Lachish, and they sent after him to Lachish, and killed him there, and brought him on horses. And he was buried at Jerusalem with his fathers in the city of Dewey. And all the people of Yehuda took Azariah, who was sixteen years old, and set him up to reign instead of his father Amatziah. He built Elath, and restored it to Yehuda after the sorrow slept with his fathers. In the fifteenth year of Amaziah, son of Yoash, the sovereign of Yehuda, Yerobiam, son of Yoash, the sovereign of Israel, began to reign in Shamaron and reigned forty-one years. And he did evil in the eyes of Yehuah. He did not turn away from all the sins of Yerobiam, son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. He restored the border of Israel from the entrance of Hamath to the sea of the Arabah, according to the word of Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel, which he had spoken through his servant Yonah, son of Amatai, the prophet who was from Gath Hephar. For Yahuwah saw that the affliction of Israel was very bitter, and there was no one, neither shut up nor left at large, to help Israel. And Yahuwah had not said that he would blot out the name of Israel from under the heavens, but saved them by the hand of Yerobiam, son of Joash. And the rest of the acts of Yerobiam, and all that he did, and his might, how he fought, and how he recovered Damascus and Hamath for Yehuda and Israel. Are they not written in the book of the annals? of the sovereigns of Israel. So Yerobiam slept with his fathers, the sovereigns of Israel, and Zechariah, his son, reigned in his place. Second Kings chapter 15. In the twenty-seventh year of Yerobiam, sovereign of Israel, Uzziah, son of Amaziah, sovereign of Yehuda, began to reign. He was sixteen years old when he began to reign, and he reigned fifty-two years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Yakoyahu of Jerusalem, and he did what was right in the eyes of Yehuah, according to all that his father Amaziah did. However, the high places were not taken away. The people still slaughtered and burned incense on the high places. And Yahuwah smote the sovereign so that he was a leper until the day of his death. And he dwelt in a separate house, and Yatham, son of the sovereign, was over the house, ruling the people of the land. And the rest of the acts of Azariah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the sovereigns of Yehuda? So Azariah slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the city of Dawid. And Yatham, his son, reigned in his place. In the thirty-eighth year of Uzziah, sovereign of Yehuda, Zechariah, son of Yerobiam, began to reign over Israel in Shemaron for six months. And he did evil in the eyes of Yehuah, 
as his fathers had done. He did not turn away from the sins of Yerobiam, son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. And Shalom, son of Yabash, conspired against him and smote him in front of the people and killed him and reigned in his place. And the rest of the acts of Zechariah, see, they are written in the book of the annals of the sovereign of Israel. This was the word of Yahuwah, which he spoke to Yahoo, saying, Your sons to the fourth generation are going to sit on the throne of Israel. And it came to be so. Shalom, son of Yabash, began to reign in the thirty-ninth year of Yoseiah, the sovereign of Yehuda. And he reigned a month of days in Shamaron. And Menahem, son of Gada, went up from Tertsa and came to Shamaron and smote Shalom, son of Yabash, in Shamaron and killed him and reigned in his place. And the rest of the acts of Shalom and the conspiracy which he led, see, they are written in the book of the annals of the servants of Israel. And Menahem smote Tipsah and all who were there and its borders from Tutsah because they did not open it to him. Therefore he smote it and he ripped open all the pregnant women. In the thirty ninth year of Uzziah, sovereign of Yehuda, Menahem, son of Gada, began to reign over Israel ten years in Shamaron. And he did evil in the eyes of Yehuah. He did not turn away from the sins of Yerobiam, son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin all his days. Pul, the sovereign of Asher, came against the land, and Menahem gave pool a thousand talents of silver for his hand to be with him to strengthen the rain in his hand. And Menahem exacted the silver of Israel of all the mighty men of wealth of each man fifty shekels of silver to give to the servant of Asher. And the servant of Asher turned back and did not stay there in the land. And the rest of the acts of Menahem and all that he did are they not written in the book of the annals of the sovereigns of Israel? So Menahem slept with his fathers, and Pekoyah, his son, reigned in his place. In the fiftieth year of Isaiah, the sovereign of Yehuda, Pekoyah, the son of Menahem, began to reign over Israel and Shemaron for two years. And he did evil in the eyes of Yehuda. He did not turn away from the sins of Yerobiam, son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. And Pekah, son of Ramoyahu, a chief officer of his, conspired against him and smote him in Shamaron, in the high place of the servant's house, along with Argob and Arya, and with him were fifty men of Gilead. So he killed him and reigned in his place. And the rest of the acts of Pekahiah and all that he did, see, they are written in the book of the annals of the servants of Israel. In the fifty-second year of Uzziah, servant of Yehuda, Pekah, son of Ramayahu, began to reign over Israel and Shamaron for twenty years. And he did evil in the eyes of Yehuda. He did not turn away from the sins of Yerobiam, son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. In the days of Pekah, sovereign of Israel, Tiglath Pilziah, sovereign of Asher, came and took Alion and Abel, Beth, Maacah, and Yanawa, and Kadash, and Hatsar, and Gilead, and Gilead, all the land of Naphtali, and took them into exile to Asher. And Hoshea, son of Elah, led a conspiracy against Pekah, son of Romaliahu, and smote him and killed him, and reigned in his place in the twentieth year of Yatham, son of Yazaiah. And the rest of the acts of Pekah and all that he did, see, they are written in the book of the annals of the servants of Israel. 
In the second year of Pekah, son of Ramayahu, servant of Israel, Yatham, son of Yahu, servant of Yehuda, began to reign. He was twenty-five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Yerusha, the daughter of Zadok. And he did what was right in the eyes of Yehuah. He did according to all that his father Yahu did. However, the high places were not taken away. The people still slaughtered and burned incense on the high places. He built the upper gate of the house of Yehuah. And the rest of the acts of Yatham and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the servants of Yehuda? In those days, Yehuah began to sin, Ratzin, servant of Aram, and Pekah, son of Ramaliahu, against Yehuda. So Yatham slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of Dawid, his father, and Ahaz, his son, reigned in his place. Second Kings chapter 16 in the seventeenth year of Pekah, son of Ramayahu, Ahaz, son of Yatham, sovereign of Yehuda, began to reign. Ahaz was twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And he did not do what was right in the eyes of Yehuda his Elohim, as his father Dawid had done. But he walked in the way of the sovereigns of Israel, and he also made his son pass through the fire according to the abominations of the Gentiles whom Yahuwah had dispossessed from before the children of Israel. And he slaughtered and burned incense on the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. Then Ratzon, sovereign of Aram, and Pekah, son of Ramaliahu, sovereign of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to battle. And they besieged Ahaz, but were unable to overcome him. At that time Ratzin, sovereign of Aram, recovered Elath for Aram, and drove the men of Yehuda from Elath, and the Edomites went to Elath, and have dwelt there to this day. And Ahaz sent messengers to Tiglath Peleza, sovereign of Asher, saying, I am your servant and your son. Come up and save me from the hand of the servant of Aram and from the hand of the servant of Israel who are rising up against me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in the house of Yahuwah and in the treasures of the house of the servant and sent it as a present to the servant of Asher. And the servant of Asher listened to him. And the servant of Asher went up against Damascus and captured it and exiled it to Ker, and he killed Ratzin. And sovereign Ahaz went to meet Tigla-Pelesa, sovereign of Asher, at Damascus, and saw an altar that was at Damascus. And sovereign Ahaz sent to Uriah the priest a sketch of the altar and its pattern according to all its workmanship. And Uriah the priest built an altar according to all the servant Ahaz had sent from Damascus. And Uriah the priest made it before sovereign Ahaz came from Damascus. And when the sovereign came from Damascus, the sovereign saw the altar, and the sovereign approached the altar and made offerings on it. And he burned his burnt offering and his grain offering, and he poured his drink offering, and sprinkled the blood of his peace offerings on the altar. And the bronze altar which was before Yahuwah he brought from the front of the house from between the new altar and the house of Yahuwah and put it on the north side of his altar. And sovereign Ahaz commanded Uriah the priest saying, On the great altar burn the morning burnt offering and the evening grain offering and the sovereign's burnt offering and his grain offering with the burnt offering of all the people of the land, and their grain offering, and their drink offerings, and sprinkle on it all the blood of the burnt offering, and all the blood of the slaughtering. And the bronze altar is for me to inquire by. And Uriah the priest did according to all that Solomon Ahaz commanded. And Solomon Ahaz cut off the side panels of the stands, and removed the basins from them. And he took down the sea from the bronze oxen that were under it and put it on a pavement of stones. And the covered 
way which they had built in the house for the Sabbath, and the sovereign's outer entrance he took from the house of Yahuwah because of the sovereign of Asher, and the rest of the acts of Ahaz which he did. Are they not written in the book of the annals of the sermons of Yehuda? So Ahaz slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of Dawid. And Hezekiah, who his son, reigned in his place. Second Kings chapter 17 in the twelfth year of Ahaz, sovereign of Yehuda, Hoshea, son of Eli, began to reign over Israel and Shemaron for nine years. And he did evil in the eyes of Yehuah, but not as the sovereigns of Israel who were before him. Shalmaneser, sovereign of Asher, came up against him, and Hoshea became his servant and rendered him a present. But the sovereign of Asher found a conspiracy in Hoshea, for he had sent messengers to so sovereign of Mizraim, and had not brought a present to the sovereign of Asher as year by year. And the sovereign of Asher shut him up and bound him in prison. And the sovereign of Asher went through all the land and went up to Shemaron and besieged it for three years. In the ninth year of Hoshea, the sovereign of Asher captured Shemaron and exiled Israel to Asher and settled them in Hala and Haba, the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes. Now this came to be because the children of Israel had sinned against Yahuwah, their Elohim, who had brought them up out of the land of Mizraim from under the hand of Pharaoh, sovereign of Mizraim, and feared other mighty ones, and walked in the laws of the Gentiles whom Yahuwah had dispossessed from before the children of Israel and of the sovereigns of Israel that they had made. And the children of Israel secretly did against Yahuwah their Elohim matters that were not right, and they built for themselves high places in all their cities, from watchtower unto the walled city, and set up for themselves pillars and Asherim on every high hill and under every green tree, and burn incense there on all the high places like the Gentiles whom Yahuwah had removed from their presence. And they did evil matters to provoke Yahuwah, and served the idols of which Yahuwah had said to them, Do not do this. And Yahuwah warned Israel and Yehuda through all of his prophets and every seal, saying, Turn back from your evil ways and guard my commands and my laws according to all the Torah which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants the prophets. But they did not listen and hearten their necks like the necks of their fathers who did not put their trust in Yahuwah their Elohim and rejected his laws and his covenant that he had made with their fathers and his witnesses which he had witnessed against them and went after worthlessness and became worthless and after the Gentiles who were all around them of whom Yahuwah had commanded them not to do like them and they left all the commands of Yahuwah their Elohim and made for themselves a molded image two calves and made an Asherah and bowed themselves to all the hosts of the heavens, and served Baal, and caused their sons and daughters to pass through the fire, and practiced divination and sorcery, and sold themselves to do evil in the eyes of Yahuwah to provoke him. So Yahuwah was very enraged with Israel, and removed them from his presence. None was left but the tribe of Yehuda alone. Yehuda also did not guard the commands of Yahuwah their Elohim, but walked in the laws of Israel which they made. And Yahuwah rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and gave them into the hand of plunderers until he had cast them out from his presence. For he tore Israel from the house of the weed, and they made Yerobiam son of Nebat sovereign, and Yerobiam drove Israel from following Yahuwah and made them commit a great sin. And the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Yerobiam, which he did. They did not turn away from them until Yahuwah removed Israel from his presence, as he spoke by all his servants, the prophets. So Israel 
was exiled from their land to Asher, as it is to this day. And the sovereign of Asher brought people from Babel and from Kutha and from Awa and from Hamath and Sephawayim and placed them in the cities of Shamaron instead of the children of Israel. And they took possession of Shamaron and dwelt in its cities. And it came to be at the beginning of their dwelling there that they did not fear Yahuwah. And Yahuwah sent lions among them which kept on slaying among them. And they spoke to the sovereign of Asher saying, The nations whom you have removed and placed in the cities of Shemaron do not know the right ruling of the Elohim of the land. And he has sent lions among them. And see, they are slaying among them because they do not know the right ruling of the Elohim of, la of the land. And the sovereign of Asher commanded, saying, Send one of the priests whom you exiled from there to go there. Let him go and dwell there, and let him teach them the right ruling of the Elohim of the land. And one of the priests whom they had exiled from Shemaron came and dwelt in Bethel, and taught them how to fear Yahuwah. But every nation was making mighty ones of its own, and put them in the houses of the high places which the Shemaronites had made every nation in the cities where they dwelt. And the men of Babel made Sukkot, Benoth, and the men of Kut made Nergal, and the men of Hamath made Ashimah, and the Arwites made Nebuchadnezz and Tartag, and the Sephirites burned their children in fire to a Dremelech, and a Nelmelech, the mighty ones of Sepharim. They also feared Yahuwah, and from every class they made for themselves priests of the high places, who offered for them in the house of the high places. They were fearing Yahuwah, and they were serving their own mighty ones, according to the ruling of the nations from among whom they had been exiled. To this day they are doing according to the former rulings. They are not fearing Yahuwah, nor do they follow their laws or their right rulings or the Torah and command which Yahuwah had commanded the children of Yaakov, whose name he made Israel, with whom Yahuwah had made a covenant and commanded them, saying, Do not fear other mighty ones, nor bow down to them, nor serve them, nor slaughter to them. But Yahuwah, who brought you up from the land of Mizraim with great power, and with an outstretched arm, him you shall fear, and to him you shall bow yourselves, and to him you shall slaughter, and guard to do forever the laws and the right rulings, and the Torah and the command which he wrote for you, and do not fear other mighty ones, and do not forget the covenant that I have made with you, and do not fear other mighty ones, but fear Yahuwah, your Elohim, so that he delivers you from the hand of all your enemies. And they did not obey but did according to their former ruling. So these nations were fearing Yahuwah and served their carved images, both their children and their children's children, as their fathers did. They are doing to this day. Second Kings chapter 18 And it came to be in the third year of Hoshea son of Eli, servant of Israel, that Hezekiah, son of Ahaz, sovereign of Yehuda, began to reign. He was twenty-five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty-nine years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Abba, daughter of Zechariah. And he did what was right in the eyes of Yehuah, according to all that his father Dawid did. He took away the high places and broke the pillars and cut down the Asherah, and broke in pieces the bronze serpent which Moshe had made for until those days the children of Israel burned incense to it and called it Nehushtan. He put his trust in Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel. And after him was none like him among all the servants of Yehudah, nor who were before him. And he clung to Yahuwah. He did not turn away from following him, but 
guarded his commands which Yahuwah had commanded Moshe. And Yahuwah was with him. Wherever he went, he acted wisely. And he rebelled against the servant of Asher and did not serve him. He smote the Philistines as far as Azah and its borders, from watchtower unto the walled city. And it came to be in the fourth year of Sarah Hezekiah, who, which was the seventh year of Hoshea, son of Elah, sovereign of Israel, that Shalom Manasseh, sovereign of Asher, came up against Shamaron and besieged it. And they captured it at the end of three years. In the sixth year of Hezekiah, that is the ninth year of Hoshea, sovereign of Yisrael, Shamaron, was captured. And the sovereign of Asher exiled Yisrael to Asher and placed them in Hala and Haba, the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes, because they did not obey the voice of Yahuwah, their Elohim, but transgressed his covenant, all that Moshe, the servant of Yahuwah, had commanded. And they did not obey, not do them. And in the fourteenth year of sovereign Hezekiah, Sanhedrin, sovereign of Asher, came up against all the walled cities of Yehuda and captured them. And Hezekiah, sovereign of Yehuda, sent to the sovereign of Asher at Lachish, saying, I have done wrong. Turn away from me. I shall bear whatever you impose on me. And the sovereign of Asher imposed upon Hezekiah, the sovereign of Yehuda, three hundred talents of silver and thirty talents of gold. And Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of Yehuah and in the treasuries of the sovereign's house. At that time, Hezekiah cut off the doors of the heckle of Yahuwah and the doorposts which Hezekiah, sovereign of Yehuda, had overlaid and gave it to the sovereign of Asher. And the sovereign of Asher sent the Tartan and the Rabsaris and the Rabshakeh from Lachish with a great army against Jerusalem to sovereign Hezekiah. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. And when they had come up, they came and stood by the channel of the upper pool, which was on the highway to the launderer's field. And they called to the sovereign. And Eliakim, son of Hilkiahu, who was over the household, and Shepna the scribe, and Joab, son of Asaph, the recorder, came out to them. And the Rabshakeh said to them, Please say to Hezekiah, who thus said the great sovereign, the sovereign of Asher, What is this trust in which you have trusted? You have spoken of having counsel and strength for battle, but they are only words of the lips. And in whom do you trust that you rebelled against me? Now look, you have put your trust in the staff of this crushed reed, Mizraim, on which if a man leans, it shall go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh sovereign of Mizraim to all who trust in him. But when you say to me, We trust in Yahuwah our Elohim, is it not he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah has taken away and said to Yehuda and Jerusalem, Bow yourselves before this altar in Jerusalem? And now I urge you, give a pledge to my master, the sovereign of Asher. Then I give you 2,000 horses, if you are able to put riders on them. And how do you turn back the face of one commander of the least of my master's servants and trust in Mizraim for chariots and horsemen? Have I now come up without Yahuwah against this place to destroy it? Yahuwah said to me, Go up against this land, and you shall destroy it. Then said Elohim, son of Hilkiahu, and Shepna, and Yoab, to the Rabshakeh, Please speak to your servants in Aramaic, for we understand it, and do not speak to us in the language of Yehuda, in the ears of the people on the wall. 
And the rabshakeh said to them, Has my master sent me to your master and to you to speak these words, and not to the men sitting on the wall to eat their own dung and drink their own urine with you? And the rabshakeh stood and called out with a loud voice in the language of Yehuda, and spoke and said, Hear the word of the great sovereign, the sovereign of Asher. Thus said the sovereign, Do not let Hezekiah who deceive you, for he is unable to deliver you out of his hand. And do not let Hezekiah who make you trust in Yahuwah, saying, Yahuwah shall certainly deliver us, and this city is not given into the hand of the sovereign of Asher. Do not listen to Hezekiah who, for thus said the sovereign of Asher, Make peace with me by a present, and come out to me, and let each of you eat from his own vine, and each from his own fig tree, and each of you drink the waters of his own cistern, until I come. Then I shall take you away to a land like your own land, a land of grain and new wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of olive trees and honey, and live and not die. But do not listen to Hezekiah when he misleads you, saying, Yahuwah shall deliver us. Has any of the mighty ones of the nations at all delivered its land from the hand of the sovereign of Asher? Where are the mighty ones of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the mighty ones of Sephawim and Hina and Ewa? Did they deliver Shemaron from my hand? Who among all the mighty ones of the lands have delivered their land out of my hand? That Yahuwah should deliver Jerusalem from my hand. But the people were silent and did not answer him a word. For the command of the sovereign was, do not answer him. And Elokin, son of Hilkiah, who was over the household, and Shebna, the scribe, and Joab, son of Asaph, the recorder, came to Hezekiah, who, with their garments torn, and they reported to him the words of the Rav Shaka. Second Kings chapter 19 And it came to be when sovereign Hezekiah heard it, that he tore his garments and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of Yahuwah, and sent Eliakim, who was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered themselves with sackcloth to Yeshayahu the prophet, son of Amos. And they said to him, Thus said Hezekiah, This day is a day of distress and rebuke and scorn, for the children have come to birth, but there is no power to bring forth. It could be that Yahuwah, your Elohim, does hear all the words of the Rabshakeh whom his master, the sovereign of Asher, has sent to reproach the living Elohim and shall rebuke the words which Yahuwah your Elohim has heard. Therefore lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. And the servants of sovereign Hezekiah came to Yeshayah, and Yeshayah said to them, Say this to your master, Thus said Yahuwah, Do not be afraid of the words which you have heard, with which the servants of the sovereign of Asher have reviled me. See, I am putting a spirit upon him, and he shall hear a report and return to his own land. And I shall cause him to fall by the sword in his land. And the Rabshakeh returned and found the sovereign of Asher fighting against Libna. For he had heard that he had left Lachish. And when the sovereign heard concerning Terhaku, sovereign of Cush, see, he has come out to fight against you. He again sent messengers to Hezekiah, who saying, Speak to Hezekiah, who sovereign of Yehuda, saying, Do not let your Elohim in whom you trust deceive you, saying, Jerusalem is not given into the hand of the sovereign of Asher. See, you have heard what the sovereigns of Asher have done to all lands by putting them under the ban. And are you going to be delivered? Have the mighty ones of the nations delivered those whom my fathers have destroyed, Gozan and Haran and Ratzef? 
and the sons of Eden who were in Talassa? Where is the sovereign of Hamath and the sovereign of Arpad and the sovereign of the city of Sephawayim, Hena and Ewa? And Hezekiah, who received the letters from the hand of the messengers, and read them, and went up to the house of Yahuwah. And Hezekiah, who spread it before Yahuwah. And Hezekiah, who prayed before Yahuwah, and said, O Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, the one who dwells between the cherubim, you are Elohim, you alone of all the reigns of the earth. You have made the heavens and earth. Incline your ear, O Yahuwah, and hear. Open your eyes, O Yahuwah, and see. And hear the words of Sanherib, which he has sent to reproach the living Elohim. Truly, Yahuwah, the servants of Asher have laid waste the nations and their lands, and have put their mighty ones into the fire. For they were not mighty ones, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone, and destroyed them. And now, O Yahuwah, our Elohim, I pray, save us from his hand, so that all the reigns of the earth know that you are Yahuwah Elohim, you alone. Then Yahu, son of Amoth, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus said Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, I have heard that which you have prayed to me against Sanherib, sovereign of Asher. This is the word which Yahuwah has spoken concerning him. The maiden, the daughter of Zion, has despised you, mocked you. The daughter of Jerusalem has shaken her head behind you. Whom have you reproached and reviled? Against whom have you raised a voice and lifted up your eyes on high against the set-apart one of Israel? By the hand of your messengers you have reproached Jehovah and said, With my many chariots I have come up to the height of the mountains to the sides of Lebanon, and I cut down its tall cedars, its choice cypress trees, and I enter its remotest parts, its thickest forest. I have dug and drunk strange water, and with the soles of my feet I dry up all the streams of defense. Have you not heard long ago? I made it from days of old. I formed it. Now I have brought it to be that you should make walled cities runious heaps. And their inhabitants were powerless. They were overthrown and put to shame. They were as the grass of the field and the green plants, as the grass on the housetops, and withered before it came up. But I know your sitting down and your going out and your coming in and your rage against me. Because your rage against me and your pride have come up to my ears, I shall put my hook in your nose and my bridle in your lips, and I shall turn you back by the way which you came. And this is the sign for you. This year you eat what grows of itself, and in the second year what springs from that, and in the third year sow and reap and plant vineyards and eat their fruit. And the remnant who have escaped of the house of Yehuda shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem comes forth a remnant, and those who escape from Mount Zion, the order of Yahuwah does this. Therefore, Thus said Yahuwah concerning the sovereign of Asher. He does not come into this city, nor does he shoot an arrow there, nor does he come before it with shield, nor does he build a siege mound against it. By the way that he came, by the same he turns back. And he does not come into this city, declares Yahuwah. And I shall defend this city, to save it for my own sake and for the sake of Dawid my servant. And it came to be in that night that the messenger of Yahuwah went out and smote in the camp of Asher 185,000. And they rose up early in the morning and saw all of them dead bodies. 
and Sanherib, sovereign of Asher, broke camp and went away and turned back and remained in Nineveh. And it came to be as he was bowing himself in the house of Nezirach, his mighty one, that his sons Adramelech and Shaetza smote him with the sword, and they escaped into the land of Ararat. And his son E. Shashadon reigned in his place. Second Kings chapter 20 In those days Hezekiah was sick unto death. And Yeshayahu the prophet son of Amos went to him and said to him, Thus said Yahuwah, Set your house in order, for you are going to die and not live. And he turned his face toward the wall and prayed to Yahuwah, saying, I pray to you, O Yahuwah, remember how I have walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done what was good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And it came to be before Yeshayahu had gone out into the middle court that the word of Yahuwah came to him, saying, Return and say to Hezekiah, the leader of my people, Thus said Yahuwah, the Elohim of Dawid your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears. See, I am going to heal you. On the third day go up to the house of Yahuwah, and I shall add to your days fifteen years, and deliver you and this city from the hand of the sovereign of Asher, and shall defend this city for my own sake, and for the sake of the weed my servant. And Yeshayahu said, Take a cake of figs, and they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. And Hezekiah said to Yeshayahu, What is the sign that Yahuwah does heal me? and that I shall go up to the house of Yahuwah the third day. And Yeshayahu said, This is the sign for you from Yahuwah, that Yahuwah does the word which he has spoken. Shall the shadow go forward ten degrees or go backward ten degrees? And Hezekiah said, It would be easy for the shadow to go down ten degrees. No. But let the shadow go backward ten degrees. And Yeshayahu the prophet cried out to Yahuwah, and he brought the shadow ten degrees backward, by which it had gone down on the sundial of Ahaz. At that time, Baradag Baladan, son of Baladan, sovereign of Babel, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he heard that Hezekiah had been sick. And Hezekiah listened to them and show them all his treasure house, the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment and all his armory and all that was found among his treasures. There was not an object in his house or in all his rule that Hezekiah did not follow them. And Yeshayahu the prophet came to sovereign Hezekiah and said to him, What did these men say and from where did they come to you? And Hezekiah said, They came from a distant land from Babel. And he said, What have they seen in your house? And Hezekiah answered, They saw all that is in my house. There is not an object among my treasures that I did not show them. And Yeshayahu said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of Yahuwah. See, the days are coming when all that is in your house and what your fathers have treasured up until this day shall be brought to Babel. No object is to be left, said Yahuwah. And they are going to take away some of your sons who are to be born to you, whom you bring forth, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the sovereign of Babel. And Hezekiah said to Yeshayah, The word of Yahuwah which you have spoken is good. And he said, Is it not so? if peace and truth are to be in my days. And the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and all his might and how he made a pool and a channel and brought water into the city, are they not written in the book of the annals of the servants of Yehuda? So Hezekiah slept with his fathers and Manasseh, his son, reigned in his place. 
2 Kings chapter 21. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Hephzibah, and he did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah, according to the abominations of the Gentiles whom Yahuwah dispossessed before the children of Israel. For he turned and built the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had destroyed, and raised up altars for Baal, and made an Asherah, as Ahab, servant of Israel, had done. And he bowed himself to all the hosts of the heavens, and served them. And he built altars in the house of Yahuwah, of which Yahuwah had said, In Jerusalem I put my name. And he built altars for all the hosts of the heavens in the two courtyards of the house of Yahuwah. And he made his son pass through the fire and practice magic and use divination and consulted spiritists and mediums. He did much evil in the eyes of Yahuwah to provoke him. And he placed a carved image of Asherah that he had made in the house of which Yahuwah had said to Dawid and to Shalomah his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I put my name forever. And no more shall I call the feet of Israel to move from the soil which I gave their fathers. Only if they guard to do according to all that I have commanded them, and according to all the Torah that my servant Moshe commanded them. But they did not obey, and Manasseh led them astray to do more evil than the Gentiles whom Yahuwah had destroyed before the children of Israel. And Yahuwah spoke by his servants the prophets, saying, Because Manasseh, sovereign of Yehuda, has done these abominations, having done more evil than all the Amorites who were before him, and also made Yehuda sin with his idols. Therefore thus said Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, See, I am bringing such evil upon Jerusalem and Yehuda that both ears of those who hear of it shall tingle. And I shall stretch over Jerusalem the measuring line of Shamaron and the plummet of the house of Ahab, and shall wipe Jerusalem as one wipes a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. And I shall forsake the remnant of my inheritance, and give them into the hand of their enemies. And they shall be for a prey and for a plunder to all their enemies, because they have done evil in my eyes, and have provoked me since the day their fathers came out of Mizraim, even to this day. And also Manasseh shed very much innocent blood until he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another, besides his sin with which he made Yehuda sin in doing evil in the eyes of Yahuwah. And the rest of the acts of Manasseh and all that he did and the sin that he committed, are they not written in the book of the annals of the sovereigns of Yehuda? So Manasseh slept with his fathers and was buried in the garden of his own house in the garden of Yoza. And his son Ammon reigned in his place. Ammon was twenty-two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. And the name of his mother was Mashulameth, the daughter of Harutz of Yotabah. And he did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah, as his father Manasseh had done, and walked in all the ways that his father had walked, and served the idols that his father had served, and bowed himself to them, and forsook Yahuwah Elohim of his fathers, and did not walk in the way of Yahuwah. And the servants of Ammon conspired against him and killed the sovereign in his own house. But the people of the land smote all those who had conspired against sovereign Ammon. And the people of the land set up his son, Yoshayahu, to reign in his place. And the rest of the acts of Ammon, which he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the sovereigns of Yehuda? And he was buried in his tomb in the garden of Yosah, and his son Yoshayahu reigned in his place. Thank you, Father. Second Kings chapter 22. Yoshayahu was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Yedidah, the daughter of Adiah of Boscath. 
and he did what was right in the eyes of Yahuwah, and walked in all the ways of his father Dawid, and did not turn aside, right or left. And it came to be in the eighteenth year of Sarvan, Yoshiyahu, that the Sarvan sent Shophan, the scribe, son of Asaliahu, son of Meshulam, to the house of Yahuwah, saying, Go up to Hilkiyahu, the high priest, and let him weigh the silver which had been brought into the house of Yahuwah, which the doorkeepers have gathered from the people, and let them give it into the hand of those doing the work who are the overseers in the house of Yahuwah, and let them give it to those who are in the house of Yahuwah doing the work to repair the damages of the house, to carpenters and to builders and to stone masons and to buy timber and huge stone to repair the house. However, let not the silver given into their hand be reckoned with them, for they are acting trustworthily. And here Kayahu the high priest said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the Torah in the house of Yahuwah. And here Kayah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. And Shaphan the scribe came to the sovereign and brought word to the sovereign again, saying, Your servants have gathered the silver that was found in the house and have given it into the hand of those who do the work, who oversee the house of Yahuwah. And Shaphan the scribe informed the sovereign, saying, Here Kayah the priest has given me a book. And Shaphan read it before the sovereign. And it came to be when the sovereign heard the words of the book of the Torah that he tore his garments. And the sovereign commanded Hilkiah the priest and Ahikam son of Shaphan and Akbar son of Micaiah and Shaphan the scribe and Ashiah a servant of the sovereign saying, Go inquire of Yahuwah for me, for the people and for all Yehuda concerning the words of this book that has been found. For great is the wrath of Yehuda that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not obeyed the words of this book to do according to all that is written concerning us. Then Hilkiahu the priest, and Ahikam, and Akbar, and Shaphan, and Asaiah went to Huda the prophet, the wife of Shalom, son of Tikwa, son of Habhas, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she was dwelling in Jerusalem in the second quarter. And they spoke with her, and she said to them, Thus said Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, Say to the man who sent you to me, Thus said Yahuwah, See, I am bringing evil on this place and on its inhabitants, all the words of the book which the sovereign of Yehuda has read because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other mighty ones to provoke me with all the works of their hands. And so my wrath shall be kindled against this place and not be quenched. And to the sovereign of Yehuda who sent you to inquire of Yehuda, say this to him, Thus said Yehuda Elohim of Israel, As for the words which you have heard, because your heart was tender, and you humbled yourself before Yahuwah when you heard what I spoke against this place and against its inhabitants, that they would become a ruin and a curse, and did tore your garments and wept before me. I also have heard, declares Yahuwah. Therefore, see, I am gathering you to your fathers, and you shall be gathered to your grave in peace so that your eyes do not see all the evil I am bringing on this place. And they brought word. Second Kings chapter 23 And the sovereign sent, and they gathered all the elders of Yehuda and Jerusalem to him. And the sovereign went up to the house of Yehuah, with all the men of Yehuda and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him, and the priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant which had been found in the house of Yehuah. And the sovereign stood by the column and made a covenant before Yehuah to follow Yehuah and to guard his commands and his witnesses and his laws with all his heart and all his being to establish the words of this covenant that were written in this book and all the people stood to the covenant. Then the sovereign commanded Hilkiah the high priest 
and the priests of the second order and the doorkeepers to bring out of the heckle of Yahuwah all the objects that were made for Baal and for Asherah and for all the hosts of the heavens. And he burned them outside Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron and took their ashes to Bethel. And he put down the black robed priests whom the sovereigns of Yehuda had appointed to burn incense on the high places in the cities of Yehuda and in the places all around Jerusalem. And those who burn incense to Baal, to the sun and to the moon and to the constellations and to all the hosts of the heavens. And he brought out the Asherah from the house of Yahuwah to the water Kidron outside Jerusalem and burned it at the water Kidron and ground it to ashes and threw its ashes on the graves of the sons of the people. And he broke down the houses of the male cult prostitutes that were in the house of Yahuwah where the women wove tapestries for the Asherah. And he brought all the priests from the cities of Yehuda and defiled the high places where the priests had burned incense from Gibba to Beersheba and broke down the high places at the gates which were at the entrance of the gate of Yehushua the governor of the city which were to the left of the city gate. However the priests of the high places did not come up to the altar of Yehuah in Jerusalem but they ate unleavened bread among their brothers and he defiled Tophath which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom so that no man could make his son or his daughter pass through the fire to Molech. And he did away with the horses that the sovereigns of Yehuda had given to the son at the entrance to the house of Yehuah by the room of Nathan Melech, the eunuch that were in the court. And he burned the chariots of the son with fire and the altars that were on the roof of the upper room of Ahaz, which the sovereigns of Yehuda had made and the altars which Manasseh had made in the two courtyards of the house of Yehuah the sovereign broke down and rushed from there and threw their dust into the water Kidron. And the sovereign defiled the high places that were before Jerusalem, which were on the right hand of the mountain of destruction, which Shalomah, sovereign of Israel, built for Astaroth the abomination of the Tesadonians, and for Chemosh the abomination of the Moabites, and for Milcom the abomination of the children of Ammon. And he broke in pieces the pillars and cut down the Asherim, and filled their places with the bones of men. And also the altar that was at Beth El, and the high place which Yerobiam, son of Nebat, made, by which he made Israel sin, both that altar and the high place he broke down. And he burned the high place, and ground it to dust, and burned the Asherah. Then Yahu turned and saw the tombs that were there on the mountain. And he sent and took the bones out of the tombs and burned them on the altar and defiled it according to the word of Yahuwah, which the man of Elohim proclaimed, who proclaimed these words. And he said, What tombstone is this that I see? And the men of the city said to him, It is the tomb of the man of Elohim who came from Yehuda and proclaimed these matters which you have done against the altar of Bethel. And he said, let him alone. Let no one move his bones. So they left his bones alone with the bones of the prophet who came from Shemaron. And Yahu also took away all the houses of the high places that were in the cities of Shemaron, which the sovereigns of Israel had made to provoke. And he did to them according to all the deeds he did in Bethel. And he slaughtered all the priests of the high places who were there on the altars and burned men's bones on them and went back to Jerusalem. And the sovereign commanded all the people saying, prepare the Passover to Yahuwah your Elohim as it is written in this book of the covenant. For such a Passover had not been prepared since the days of the rulers who ruled Israel, nor in all the days of the sovereigns of Israel and the sovereigns of Yehuda. But in the 18th year of sovereign Yoshiyahu, this Passover was prepared before Yahuwah in Jerusalem. And also, Yahu put away those who consulted mediums and spiritists and the household mighty ones and idols and all the abominations that were seen in the land of Yehuda and in Jerusalem in order to establish the words of the Torah which were written in the book that Hilkiyahu the priest found in the house of Yahuwah. And before him there was no sovereign like him, 
who turned back to Yahuwah with all his heart and with all his being and with all his might, according to all the Torah Moshe. And after him, none rose up like him. However, Yahuwah did not turn from the fierceness of his great wrath with which his wrath burned against Yehuda because of all the provocations with which Manasseh had provoked him. And Yehuda said, Even Yehuda I shall remove from my presence as I have removed Israel. And I shall reject this city of Jerusalem, which I have chosen and the house of which I said my name is there. And the rest of the acts of Yoshayahu and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the sovereigns of Yehuda? In his days, Pharaoh Necho, sovereign of Mizraim, went up against the sovereign of Asher to the river Euphrates. And sovereign Yoshayahu went out to him and he killed him at Megiddo when he saw him. And his servants conveyed his body in a chariot from Megiddo and brought him to Jerusalem and buried him in his own tomb. And the people of the land took Yahoaha, son of Yoshayahu, and anointed him and set him up to reign in his father's place. Yahoaha was twenty three years old when he began to reign. And he reigned three months in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hamatal, the daughter of. Yahu of Libna. And he did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah, according to all that his fathers did. And Pharaoh Necho imprisoned him at Riblah in the land of Hamath to keep him from reigning in Jerusalem. And he imposed on the land a fine of one hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. And Pharaoh Necho set up Elohim son of Yoshayahu to reign in place of his father Yoshayahu and changed his name to Jehoiakim. And Pharaoh took Jehoahaz and went to Mizraim and he died there. And Jehoiakim gave the silver and gold to Pharaoh. Only he taxed the land to give silver according to the command of Pharaoh. He exacted the silver and gold from the people of the land, from everyone according to his assessment, to give it to Pharaoh Necho. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Zebadah, the daughter of Padiah of Roma, and he did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah, according to all that his fathers did. 2 Kings chapter 24 In his days Nebuchadnezzar, sovereign of Babel, came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant for three years, and he turned and rebelled against him. And Yahuwah sent against him raiding bands of Chaldeans, and raiding bands of Aram, and raiding bands of Moab, and raiding bands of the children of Ammon, and he sent them against Yehuda to destroy it, according to the word of Yahuwah, which he had spoken by his servants the prophets. Only at the command of Yahuwah this came upon Yehuda to remove them from his presence, because of the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he did and also because of the innocent blood that he shed. For he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which Yehoah would not forgive. And the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the sovereigns of Yehuda? So Jehoiakim slept with his fathers, and Jehoiakim, his son, reigned in his place. And the sovereign of Mizraim did not come out of his land again, for the sovereign of Babel had taken all that belonged to the sovereign of Mizraim from the wadi of Mizraim to the river Euphrates. Jehoiakim was eighteen years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months, and his mother's name was Nehushta, the daughter of Elnathan of Jerusalem, 
and he did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah, according to all that his father did. At that time the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, sovereign of Babel, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. And Nebuchadnezzar, sovereign of Babel, came against the city as his servants were besieging it. And Jehoiakim, sovereign of Yehuda, and his mother, and his servants, and his heads, and his eunuchs, went out to the sovereign of Babel. And the sovereign of Babel, in the eighth year of his reign, took him prisoner. And he took from there all the treasures of the house of Yehuah, and the treasures of the sovereign's house, and he cut in pieces all the objects of gold which Shalom, our sovereign of Israel, had made in the heckle of Yahuwah, as Yahuwah had said. And he exiled all Jerusalem and all the officers and all the mighty brave men, ten thousand exiles and all the craftsmen and smiths. None remained except the poorest people of the land. And he exiled Jehoiakim to Babel, and the sovereign's mother and the sovereign's wives and his eunuchs, and the leading men of the land he exiled from Jerusalem to Babel. And all the mighty brave men, seven thousand, and craftsmen, and smiths, one thousand, all who were strong and fit for battle. These the sovereign of Babel brought to Babel into exile. And the sovereign of Babel set up Mataniah, Jehoiakim's uncle, to reign in his place, and changed his name to Sitgiyahu. Sitkiyahu was 21 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hamatal, the daughter of Yahu of Libna. And he did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah, according to all that Jehoiakim did. For this took place in Jerusalem and Yehuda because of the displeasure of Yahuwah, until he had cast them out from his presence, and Sitkiyahu rebelled against the sovereign of Babel. Second Kings chapter 25 And it came to be in the ninth year of his reign in the tenth month on the tenth of the month that Nebuchadnezzar, sovereign of Babylon, and all his army, came against Jerusalem and encamped against it. And they built a siege wall against it all around. And the city was besieged until the eleventh year of sovereign Sitkiyahu. By the ninth of the month, the scarcity of food had become so severe in the city that there was no food for the people of the land. Then the city wall was breached. And all the men of battle fled at night by way of the gate between two walls, which was by the sovereign's garden, even though the Chaldeans were still encamped all around against the city. And the sovereign went by way of the desert plain. And the army of the Chaldeans pursued the sovereign and overtook him in the desert plains of Jericho. And all his army was scattered from him. And they seized the sovereign and brought him up to the sovereign of Babel at Riblah. And they pronounced sentence on him. And they slaughtered the sons of Sitkiyahu before his eyes and put out the eyes of Sitkiyahu and bound him with bronze shackles and took him to Babel. And in the fifth month on the seventh of the month, which was the nineteenth year of sovereign Nebuchadnezzar, sovereign of Babel, Nebuchadnezzar, the chief of the guard, a servant of the sovereign of Babel, came to Jerusalem. And he burned the house of Yehuah and the house of the sovereign and all the houses of Jerusalem. Even every great house he burned with fire. And all the army of the Chaldeans who were with the chief of the guard broke down the walls of Jerusalem all around. And Nebuchadnezzar, the chief of the guard, took into exile the rest of the people who were left in the city and the deserters who deserted to the sovereign of Babel with the rest of the multitude. But the chief of the guard left some of the poor of the land as vine dressers and farmers. And the bronze columns that were in the house of Yahuwah, and the stands and the bronze seed that were in the house of Yahuwah, the Chaldeans broke in pieces and took their bronze away to Babel. 
and they took the pots and the shovels and the snuffers and the ladles and all the bronze utensils the priests used in the service. And the chief of the guard took the fire holders and the basins which were of solid gold and solid silver. The bronze of all these utensils was beyond measure. The two columns, the one sea, and the stands which Shalomah had made for the house of Yahuwah. The height of one column was eighteen cubits, and the capital on it was of bronze. And the height of the capital was three cubits, and the network and pomegranates all around the capital were all of bronze. And the second column was the same with a network. And the chief of the guard took Sariah, the ch chief priest, and Zephyr, Yahu, the second priest, and the three doorkeepers. And out of the city he took a certain eunuch who was appointed over the men of battle, and five men of those who saw the sovereign's face, who were found in the city, and the chief scribe of the army, who mustered the people of the land, and sixty men of the people of the land who were found in the city. And Nebuchadnezzar, chief of the guard, took them and made them go to the sovereign of Babel at Riblah. And the sovereign of Babel smote them and put them to death at Riblah in the land of Hamath. So he exiled Yehuda from his own land. And he appointed Gadaliahu, son of Abakan, son of Shaphan, over the people who were left in the land of Yehuda, whom Nebuchadnezzar, sovereign of Babel, had left. And all the commanders of the armies, they and their men, heard that the sovereign of Babel had appointed gather Yahu, and they came to gather Yahu at Mizpah, even Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, and Yohanan, son of Kariah, and Sariah, son of Tenhumeth, the Netophenite, and Yah Azan Yahu, the son of a Maakatite, they and their men. And Galda Yahu swore to them and their men, and said to them, Do not be afraid of the servants of the Chaldeans. Dwell in the land and serve the sovereign of Babylon, and let it be well with you. And in the seventh month it came to be that Yishmael, son of Nathaniah, son of Elishama, of the seed of the rain came with ten men and smote Gadaliahu that he died, and the Yahudim and the Chaldeans who were with him at Mizpah. And all the people rose up small and great, and the commanders of the armies and went to Mizraim, for they were afraid of the Chaldeans. And it came to be in the thirty seventh year of the exile of Jehoiakim, sovereign of Yehuda, in the twelfth month, on the twenty seventh of the month that Ewil Merodach, sovereign of Babel, in the year that he began to reign, released Jehoiakim, sovereign of Yehuda, from prison, and spoke kindly to him, and set his throne above the throne of the sovereigns who were with him in Babel, and changed his prison garments, and he ate bread continually before the sovereign all the days of his life. And as his allowance... A continual allowance was given to him from the sovereign, a quota for each day, all the days of his life.